753 on this Veterans Day, we offer you a real life history lesson from a local man whose unit won several key battles in World War II. A newly created division of the United States Army was dispatched to Italy to fight the enemy over rugged terrain in a difficult climate. This man's story of courage and valor in World War II will make you proud to be an American. He is a member of the greatest generation. Ken McPherson grew up in Newton, attended the River School, and then in 1943 was off to Harvard. It was the heart of World War II. It was his time to help the war effort, so he enlisted. And it was literally all downhill from there, as Ken became part of the military's 10th Mountain Division, often referred to as the Ski Troops. In order to get into it in those days, you had to have three letters of recommendation. And so I got them from my minister, my ski instructor, and one of my teachers at Harvard. And I was accepted into it. I was thrilled. Ken was sent here to Camp Hale in Colorado, where troops were trained in all aspects of high altitude warfare on their skis. We had maneuvers on skis, and some of them were very arduous. You'd be put out in the field, you were not allowed fires, it'd be 30 below, you still had no fires, and you learned how to dig into the snow. A lot of these maneuvers were above tree line. And I mean, you know, if you start at 10,000 feet, it's not very far up before you or there's no trees, no bushes, no no anything, just just snow. We had camouflage suits. They were white on one side and green on the other. White for winter time, green for the rest of it. From Colorado, the 10th Mountain Division was sent off to Italy, hoping to force the Germans from Mount Belvedere, a key strategic stronghold for Hitler's forces. <laughs> The Germans had put a line up there. The Americans had tried four times with flatland troops to get up there and take it. They couldn't break the German line. The Germans sat up there and plunked away at them, had a lot of casualties, and nobody ever got to the top. So they said, hey, bring the mountain troops over. That's what the hell they're trained for. That was exactly so. That was our kind of, our kind of training and our kind of war. That's what we could do. Mountain warfare wasn't easy. Conditions horrible, fighting brutal, and the parts of that duty not fit for man were assigned to beast. Our supply route was really with mules. We had mules that they trained with, and our artillery was, was mountain artillery, small cannons, but up to 75 millimeter, and they were carried by mules. And mules could also bring up supplies. And while Ken was in Italy, in Milan, on some R&R, &R, he witnessed something that he'll never forget. Bombastic Mussolini, the sawdust Caesar, comes to his end in the gutter. There was Mussolini, he'd been captured on the border. He was trying to escape Italy and get into Switzerland. He got captured by the partisans, the Italian, our Italian allies. And uh, they're not in uniform, they're just plain. So the, the famous picture of Mussolini, I mean, you saw, you yeah. saw that? So I went and I saw his body. His mistress was there and four of his lieutenants, six guys strung upside down. Uh, and, and hanging there so whole, the whole world would know that they'd gotten him and he was dead. They gave him a two-minute trial. You, uh, you did this, you're guilty. Any questions? No. <laughs> Goodbye. And they shot him all dead. The 10th Mountain Forces won the Battle of Riva Ridge, a key battle in the war. And then they conquered Mount Belvedere, but not without paying a high price. We left a thousand dead in Italy. They're buried in Florence, and it's a very impressive sight to see the rows of crosses. And I've been there, and I've looked at several of my friends to see where they were. It all looks the same. They're all American soldiers, gave their lives and their future for their country. Ken McPherson doesn't consider himself a hero, just lucky. Lucky to have survived. Lucky to have served his country with distinction. Lucky to be married to his beloved wife, Abby, for 65 years. As he looks at the medals earned and memories gathered, he has a simple request for this Veterans Day. I want my own people to recognize my country, the, the, the spirit that we had of the Second World War. The whole country, every family was all for it, and every family, in one way or the other, had small or large sacrifices or they at least contributed to the war effort. Everybody did. 
And uh, it, was a, it was a wonderful thing, and we should have more of that today. But also, I want to have my friends remembered. They're gone. They have no future. I mean, they're all buried over there in Florence, and uh, I just want people to recognize that these people who gave everything they had for their country, they should be honored and uh, recognized, that's all. And what an honor it was to sit and talk with Ken McPherson. Now, he told us during training at Camp Hill in Colorado, a few of the guys noticed a meadow, and they thought, gee, that would be a great place to open up a ski lodge. After the war, some of the guys went back, they bought the land, and they turned it into a resort town known as Vale. No, Ken did not get in on that deal, though he wishes he did. And I'm told that Ken is feeling a little bit under the weather today. Get well, my friend, and thank you very much for your service to our country.